All right, so the purpose of this video is basically to break down the technique and the weak area of each individual lift and see how we can improve on it based on that information. Basically try and take our these lifts to the next level and which will turn into a better power lifting total and better placing at national and international competitions. So basically what we're going to start is with the squat obviously and we're going to look at just at the footage from raw nationals since it will be the most specific since you're maxing all three lifts in one day in a high level competition. So here we go, first attempt. Uh, basically all around, squat is good. We have a good walk out here. Three steps, some small adjustments. We got a good close grip. There you go, easy opener. Everything is pretty solid right there. Going on to the second attempt once again. Good walk out, good stance. And once again, pretty well executed. A little loose in that bottom, maybe that's why I made it a little slow. And then it sped up at the top. When you go to third attempt, here's the one we'll look at most since it's closest to our runner max. Once again, nice solid walk out, good tightness. A little slow at the bottom again and then nice easy lockout. So just to go a little further into that, we'll come over here where we can go a little slow motion, and break it down step by step. So this is just the concentric phase. So here we go, just look at a little slow motion, third attempt here. All right, so basically what we have is, let's put this in the loop and the bottom we have is if you notice right there knees come in a little bit knees shift back and once they go out the lockout becomes easier so we have a little issue with the knees collapsing and always that's related to ankle collapsing so if you see at the at the bottom over here if I go a few steps so we start going Frame by frame, you see this knee right here. It's caving in right there. So for sure that right knee on our left side from the footage is collapsing at the bottom in the reversal. And you can also see this ankle collapsed a little bit and it'll go back out once you start pushing your knees out. Right around here, you can see it. Shoe goes back out. And actually, lockout so strong, toes actually come up and then back down right there. So, the main thing we want to focus on is a uh, tight setup when descent. So, you're losing some tightness in the hole on the second attempt and on this third attempt, causing that knee to collapse a little bit, making it harder at the bottom, which is already a harder part for the raw squatter. But obviously our lockout is easy, I have no issues with that. So if we look over here on the right, we have our uh, nice little chart here of acceleration, the Y component, which is our vertical direction. And then here we have our time. And this is a table, just the numbers, but the graph will show us a better picture of what's going on. So basically we go frame by frame. We can look at where we have the lowest acceleration. So a good example of this is most people take their point where they get stuck in the lift as their weak point and where they should be strengthening either that position or the specific muscle they think is working that position. But a good example of this is basically taking your car and if you ever ran out of gas, you know that your car runs out of gas but your car continues to go through momentum further down the road until finally it hits an area where you have no more momentum to overcome friction or uphill or whatever you got going on and you stop. So the point where your car actually comes to a stop and the point where your car ran out of gas are not the same point. So the similar thing is when we're looking at our lifting. The point where you're getting stuck in the lift or slowest in the lift uh, we, through your, your, by viewing it, the velocity or where you physically get stuck and not, don't complete the lift is not the same as where you ran out of gas or where your acceleration was the lowest which is where our weak range of motion is going to be around that lowest acceleration point. 
So what we can do here is with our, through our analysis, come here and take a er look at the areas where acceleration is the lowest. So here's our first point, which is just out of the hole. So here we are a couple inches out of the hole, going frame by frame. And that would be the start of our weak range of motion, It'd be a couple inches out of the hole, partially due to just uh, the raw squat is gonna be the hardest out of the hole, just cause your uh, mechanics. And obviously we're losing some tightness. We have some knee collapse, making it more difficult. And then you can see these points go up a little bit as we're speeding up and then we slow down again. So we can also take this area as another area of weak range of motion. So it's a little higher up, maybe four or five inches out of the hole. So we can take this whole area right here and call that our weak range of motion for the squat. And that's where we need to work on. So how can we strengthen this weak range of motion make it look like the rest of this graph. You see the rest of this graph is trending upwards. Don't look at, don't necessarily worry about individual points, but you see the trend upwards in acceleration up to obviously we have a fall off at lockout because we have to slow down for the bar to stop and our body to stop. But here we have upward trend of acceleration, but here is where we have this lowest point, it goes up a little again, we have another low point. This is the area we need to fix. So how can we fix this? Well, for one, obviously working on fixing the technique on squat, like we said, staying tighter, especially in the hole, keeping those knees out, not collapsing the ankle or the knee, keeping those hips engaged. Obviously we can use uh, special exercises to get more comfortable in this area. So how do we get more comfortable in this area? By spending more time in this area. For example, pause squats. So two second pauses, four second pauses, seven second pauses, whatever you're, uh, it's necessary to spend more time in this area, get more comfortable in this area, get stronger in this area, and then lead to a better, tighter setup in the hole and the ability to use more of your force production. Another thing you can do is uh, exercise I learned from Mike Tuscher and his RTS programming called the 303 Tempo Squat. So everyone pretty much hates this exercise. Basically a 303 means the eccentric, uh, then the pause, and then the concentric. So it'd be three second descent, zero second pause, and then three second ascent. So basically you're controlling that weight, taking counting three seconds to get all the way down to hole, making sure you're hitting every point perfectly, your weight's on your midfoot, your knees are out, your elbows are down, your belly is braced, your spine is rigid, Focusing, you're hitting proper depth, staying tight, and then coming up slowly as well to make sure you're keeping those knees out, you're not tipping over, and also you're spending more time under tension on the muscles necessary for the squat. So it's really good movement for building up your strength as well as your technique and really just focusing on doing the movement pattern correctly, which will transfer to once you go to heavier weight, once you go into maxing on your just regular squat of hitting those positions correctly. And both these movements, the pause squat and the 303 tempo squat, can be done without a belt. And usually I do them, or I always do them without a belt, just as a weighted, it will be less weight, so you don't have to worry about uh, trying to put on a ton of weight and trying to set PRs or whatever like that. Just focus on doing the movement correctly and uh, also working on more of that uh, core tightness and transferring a force from the ground through your core and to the bar. So those are things you can work on for the squat, but all around, like we said, this is a very minor issue, just some loss of tightness in the hole and some knee collapse, but everything else is pretty solid. So we'll move on to the bench press. So on our first attempt, we had an issue on the bench press with the rack height not being the correct height. Now that could have, I'm not sure if that was whose fault that was or what the issue was that it was incorrect, but you can't hear it here, but basically jump the press, jump the start command, got no lift. So basically when it comes to something like this where the rack height's not the right height, basically have a couple options. One thing is if you have enough time, just tell the spotters and loaders, hey, can I get the rack height raised or lowered? Uh, obviously it'll be on your own minute since, uh, unless it was specifically, you know, for sure it's their mistake and they'll look at the score, the card you sent and check the rack height or what's on listed on the computer. 
But if it is your mistake or even if it's their mistake and you have that one minute, you can take the time, ask them nicely, hey, can you move the rack up a couple and get it set correctly. The other thing you can do in this case, since it was lower, is ask the handoff guy to just hand it off to you fully locked out, stay calm, stay focused, and wait for that start command. The whole point of the opener is that it's light enough weight. There's no worries, no rush, just executing correctly. So here we were a little freaking out that the rack height wasn't where it should be. Jumped the start command, got a no lift, and had to go on to the second to get it. So still took a two and a half kilo jump. Usually people stay the same weight, but two and a half kilo is not that big weight. The, the Obviously the weight moved easily, even though it was just like a technical issue. So got the rack height fixed. Here we go, second attempt. Solid setup, nice arch, wide grip. Feet are planted, pretty much can't really tell if the heels are up or anything like that, but since there was no red lights, we assume it was done correctly. Nice solid descent. Good tight pause, leg drive, power through. Here we go, going to third attempt. Another two and a half kilo jump, solid setup. Good descent, good leg drive. We had a little wobbling in the elbow, so if you notice this right elbow is wobbling up and down. We can come over here, look at it in slow motion. Let's go over to bench. And We'll see, there's a little wobbling going on over here of this right elbow. That doesn't happen on the left side. It's hard to tell with the supports in the way, but left side looks clean. The right side, a little flaring and wobbling here. Elbows can't stay under that wrist and bar. You actually see, initially, the left side goes up faster than the right side, probably due to that, and then the right side catches up. So just, once again, just a little thing that needs to be fixed. Pretty much all around good bench. It's just these little things that are going to take it to the next level. So once again, here we got our chart, acceleration in the horizontal, in the vertical direction, sorry, and then our time. So once again, we see we have this little slow, slow acceleration area, and then we have an upward trend. So once again, much like the raw squat, the raw bench is going to be weak off the chest, and it's going to be easier to lock out. That's why we see this upward trend. So if we take a look at where we have the lowest acceleration after our leg drive and press command, we see it's about here. So just off the chest, maybe a one or two board. And it's also around where that little elbow wobble was. So that also caused a bigger drop in acceleration. And then speeds up, drops a little there. Once again, about a two board. And it obviously speeds up. It's easy at lockout. So, how do we fix this part? So, once again, much like the squat, what we can do for the bench is first of all, continuing to work our competition bench, getting tighter, good, dis good descent and a pause, and focusing on keeping those elbows under the wrist and the wrist right under the bar. So, especially when it comes to wide grip, what a lot of people focus on is pulling the bar apart squeezing the bar and pulling it apart. So this right hand are trying to pull it out this way, this left hand trying to pull it out this way. So that'll really keep you tight, keep the triceps engaged. It should help keeping that bar even and hopefully keeping that elbow under so we don't have that little issue. Another thing you can do is much like the squat, obviously work in pauses. So obviously the competition bench already has a pause, but you can pause for a longer period of time so you, I do two count pause bench, three count pause bench, some people do five count pause bench. Once again, it gets you comfortable in this bottom position, learn how to get stay tight in this bottom position, and spending more time in your weak range of motion to strengthen that range of motion. And then the final thing we can do, which a lot of people do for bench is board presses. So we're limiting the range of motion and we can hit that board either right underneath the, where the start of our weak range of motion or right at start our weak range of motion. So for us, here we can do something, for example, one board. One board would probably be a little lower than this, or maybe right about at it. That way you, you have to drive through that sticking point over and over again. Another thing you do is two board. So you're basically stopping right at your weakest, right around your weakest point, and having to press right at that weak point, learning how to get 
stronger through that. So those are two exercises that you can implement into your training on top of your regular competition bench to help improve that. But uh, basically try to speed through the squat and bench because you do that pretty pretty well. So I wanted to focus on the deadlift, a couple of things to go over a deadlift more in depth. So the first let's look at our opening attempt right here. And what we have is a little bobble at the top which leads to no lift. So just a little thing to say about sumo pulling and especially the opening attempt for the sumo pull. Uh, what a lot of people do is they get overexcited, they yank on that boat bar, and a lot of people do this same little bobble at the top of their sumo, especially on the first attempt. So it partially happens from, because in the sumo compared to conventional, your feet are towed out, your toes are angled out a lot more, so your base support is less, and you have uh, more of a chance of losing your balance. The other thing with sumo over conventional is typically you're slow off the ground and fast at lockout, so that, that's increase in speed going into a lockout and that possibility of losing your balance people usually aren't ready for it on their opener especially if people get too jacked up and uh, they have this little ball so especially in your opener you have to stay a little more focused a little more conservative just even if you have to hold back a little bit don't pull as hard as you can on lockout just have a clean pull rather than this little but it is what it is. You go on to your second attempt. So you basically took a two and a half kilo jump. Once again, most people will stay at that same weight, make sure they stay in the meat. But a two and a half kilo jump is not that big and it was pretty easy pull for you. The hot, heavier weight might actually help you uh, slow down your lockout a little bit and execute it more correctly. So here we go, second attempt. Nice and fast, no bobble, though we did get one red. I'll go over that later. But first, let's take a look at the third attempt. Because once again, it wasn't too too slow. But once again, we got one red. So a couple of things we want to look at here with our third attempt. So if you look, you see this knee constantly locking and unlocking. So we'll come over here and look at slow motion to see what I'm talking about. So let's slide this over a bit. Down. So if we just focus on, on, our, on our right side, your left knee, slow motion. We'll see, it starts extending. Bar comes off the ground, here we go. Extends, rebends, extends, rebends, extends. And we got this little wobbling going on with the left knee. And so what we have here is, uh, I guess a major fault in your sumo pull and the way that you pull compared to what should be done and what the majority of people do. So you're basically not locking your knees out until the very end. You're extending your knees and hips at the same time and trying to wait to lock out your knees and hips at the same time. So your knees still bent, here you lock out your knee and hip at about the same time. So you're almost doing what's considered uh, the conventional deadlift style of locking your knees and hips out at the same time, but for the sumo deadlift. So to kind of show you what I'm talking about through some examples. I pull up some videos here of various lifters, various weight classes, male and female. So we take a look here at Ed Cohn. Here we go, we've got a 901 deadlift. He has a fairly close sumo stance. But you'll still see if I come here, we can even do it slow motion here. He's starting with his hips up high, just like you do right there but what we're gonna see is once he passes knees boom hard lock out of the knees and then hips so we'll come here next one a little better quality here 
of Andrei Belyov. Let me take these uh, annotations out of here. So once again, he's got not crazy wide stance since he's a shorter lifter. Once again, we got our hips starting higher and knees just like you do. Perfectly fine sit up the way you do it. Arms pretty vertical, same way you do it. That's good. But when we look at the, the rhythm, the knees as he's coming up, boom, hard lock out of the knees, and then hips follow. Keep going. I won't even try and say this guy's name from IPF Raw Worlds. We were there. Kristoff. So his is uh, his winning pull. And you'll see he's got a wider stance since he's a bigger guy, taller guy. Keeping those vertical arms will slow it down too. For this video, hips start higher than knees. Nice good back angle. Watch the knees. Once it passes, boom, knees lock out. Then he finishes with his hips bringing those shoulders back. So for him, you can really see this is a slow pull. He locks his knees out here, and then he's still finishing the sumo pull with his hips and pulling those shoulders back. And now he's finally locked out. Then he gets a down command, and basically becomes a world champion. Moving on, here's another guy from IPF for All Worlds. Lower weight class. Still long-limbed guy. You see he's going with that wider stance. So he gets set up right here, dropping his hips into the pocket, getting tight, nice and vertical. So we'll slow it down from here. He's got a wider stance than you, still fine, got the vertical arms, hips are higher than knees. Now we watch right here, waiting for that bar to break, waiting for it, staying patient, same here he goes. And as it passes his knees, boom, hard lock out of the knees. And then he finishes with his hips and his back. So we'll go a couple more. We'll go to some women. So this is from the first year the IPF uh, attempted a raw world championship. So this is Wei Ling Chen. She won, obviously. That's why we're looking at her elite level deadlift. She's got a pretty wide stance, trying to keep those arms vertical, hips higher than the knees. But when we watch her pull, just staying patient with it, keeping that same back angle, and boom, locks the knees out, and then finishes hips and back. And last one, we'll go to this year's Raw Nationals, your own weight class champion right here, Jennifer Thompson. Going for a 446 third attempt. So she's got pretty much max width on her stance. Really driving those knees out. She's going to try and keep that back angle the same as she's breaking off the ground. So here we go. We'll slow motion. So you can really see what I'm talking about. She's waiting for it, waiting for it. Starts moving. As she passes her knees, boom, knees lock out hard, then finish hips and shoulders back. So when we look at these six lifters and the way they deadlift, and then we take a look, your deadlift, it's a basic fault of the lift, but can be easily fixed by right here, locking out the knees hard, and then finishing with the hips and shoulders. So what happens when you don't lock out those knees hard is you're trying to ramp the weight up the quads or bending and rebending the knees or you're getting stuck. You get stuck at lockout where your knees bent, your shoulders slumped over. And so this is what this guy, I think it was this guy, red lighting you for on all three attempts. Obviously the first attempt you bought, you had downward motion as well. But the second and third attempt is for this uh this issue you have is you're he thinks you're ramping bar up your leg by bending and rebending your knee and put, trying to push the bar up with your with your femur rather than doing the movement correctly and then he's not sure if your knee actually ever fully locks out at the top so I'm pretty sure that's what he's giving you constantly reds for so you'll see it again if you just watch the bar on your quad 
once it gets up there it looks like you're using your quad to push that bar up right there push your hand up push your bar up and then he's not quite sure if his knee stays locked out enough to see it rebends right there and then you get the down command so I think that's what he's uh, red lighting you for so also now if we look at our graph, we see that this graph does not look like her squat or bench. Her squat has a clear one or two points where it's a low acceleration, and then we have a nice trend upwards. We look at her bench, we have about one or two points that are low, and then we have a trend upwards. We look at deadlift, and it looks like it's just noise everywhere. And that's partially because you're uh, rushing the bottom, and not taking advantage of the, the benefits of sumo, which is having that really good mechanical advantage of lockout. So not only are you being s slow at the bottom, but you're also being slow at the top. So that's when we have all these low points and we don't see that trend really going up. So if we start going forward, frame by frame, we see here's a low point, but the bar hasn't been broken off the ground. So let's go to the next low point and that's occurring oh, past the bone here about mid shin maybe a little higher because we're having knees come in so we're losing that hip already and then as we're having this little bobble we have another weak position here because you haven't you sh at this point you should be rocking the knees out hard giving you that last bit of leg drive and then finishing with the hips and shoulders so we're not using that creating this weak point and then it continues another one comes up here as you're rebending your knee using your quad and femur to push that hand and bar up ranking the weight up basically another one here basically you doesn't even look like a good position here compared to what we saw in all the examples of those elite deadlifters and then another one here so basically what we need to work on with deadlift is focusing on that technique putting in that new pattern, making it look more like, oh, sorry. Making it look more like this. Basically staying patient, keeping that backing up, locking out the knees hard and rowing to finish. Working on that, basically the best way to do it obviously is to deadlift lots of singles. You can use the SSPT deadlift table to find different ranges of your one rep max to work on 70 percent for 10 singles 80 percent for five singles 90 percent for three singles just knocking out that technique and working on a new movement of once it gets just past your knees really think about flexing your quads and, and extending your knees hard get that last bit of leg drive and then finishing by pushing your hips through and getting your shoulders back as you saw all those examples um, Basically, that's the best way to do it. You could maybe do uh, block pulls at various levels just to focus more on just that finish. So you might do mid shin or just below the knee just to focus on that movement from here to here, from below the knee to above the knee. Really focus on locking out the knees, finishing the hips, locking out the knees, finishing the hips, just move, working that movement pattern and not even worrying about the ground to me. But since the sumo is hardest at the bottom you do want to obviously spend time working that bottom position which is going to come from just sumo deadlifting over and over lots of singles so you're not getting any stretch reflex going from the second first to second rep second and third rep but that's the the main thing i want to focus on out of three lifts was this is the biggest fault which is the for the for the deadlift is the the timing the lock of the knees and hips and shoulders versus the squat and bench I just want to go over just little tidbits and little things that you can improve but if you it's funny that even with this issue you got second place on deadlift at worlds and uh second place i guess at nationals on deadlift me weight class and but if you fix this i think it'll take you to that next level really get you up into the mid 400s and uh, see where it goes from there